those of you who don't know me, my name's Councillor Jude Molyneux and I'm the chair of the committee. Of the Alex committee. Hilton is Alex vice chair. Vice chair. Please note it's a hybrid meeting with members here in the Lancastrian and registered speakers joining remotely via Teams. This meeting is also being streamed live on YouTube. If you've joined the call because you're a member of the public who's registered to speak, please note you have a time limit of up to three minutes. If you're calling on a phone, you need to press star six to unmute your device when invited to speak. The legal officer will operate a, time, a stopwatch and confirm when your time runs out. You should then finish, or if in the middle of making a point, wind up with a, within a few seconds and finish speaking. Otherwise, your microphone will be muted. For ease, a pack has been prepared which contains the reports, plans, presentation slides, and any addendum for each item to ensure everyone can follow the, ad uh, the agenda. This is available online. After officers have presented the report and any speakers have made representations, I'll invite members to make their comments. When you want to speak, please raise your hands to indicate to me that you wish to speak. When invited to speak, please turn your microphone on. Turn your microphone off when not when you finish speaking. When speaking, please reference the paragraph number to enable everyone to follow you. If technology fails, I'll adjourn the meeting for a few minutes to try and resolve the issue. Or if it isn't possible, a new date and time will be organised. Apologies. As far as I know, none have been received. We've not received any apologies, Chair. Thanks very much. Minutes of the meeting, Tuesday the 15th of June, pages 5 to 8. Can you move those, please? Thank you, Councillor G. Councillor Beaver seconded. Is everybody in favour of that? Thank you. The minutes are approved. Declarations of interest. Members are reminded of their responsibility to declare any pecuniary interest in respect of matters contained in the agenda. As it's a hybrid meeting, if a member has a pecuniary interest, they are requested to vacate the Lancastrian for that item. The member then can then return to the Lancastrian following the completion of the item in question. Planning applications to be determined. Oh, I'm not up to that yet. I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> no, I'm right, aren't I? Okay, we've done the minutes. Fine, okay. Um, we've got seven items, 11 items, sorry, submitted to be determined tonight. For the benefit of the public here tonight, the speaking arrangements for planning are as follows. The officers will summarise the report. Registered speakers will be invited to speak in the following order. Objector, supporter, parish or town councillor, ward councillor, applicant or agent. All registered speakers will be allowed to speak for up to three minutes, apart from a ward councillor who may speak for up to five minutes. In the event that all speakers are against the application as chair, I will grant the applicant or representative a time extension. I would respectfully ask members of the public who have not registered to speak to remain quiet throughout the proceedings. And members, can you turn your mobile phones to silent, please? With that, we will go on to item 3A, land 60 metres west of number 3 Castle Walks, pages 9 to 52 of your agenda with an update on your addendum although the recommendation remains the same. Adele's going to present this item, and I have two registered speakers, the objector, Taryn Wilkinson, and applicant, Alison Davidson. Taryn, Alison, can you confirm you're able to speak and hear? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Um, right, Adele, can you present the report, please? Thank you, Chair. Um, good evening, everybody. Um, this application proposes a single dwelling house with access from Yarrow Close. The site is comprised of a large parcel of land situated between the River Yarrow and the houses of Yarrow Close. And members will be aware that the land is designated as existing open space and falls within the defined Croston Conservation Area. It's situated within the settlement boundary of Croston and falls within Flood Zone 3. The site is also identified as having archaeological potential in the form of a castle, moat, or other fortified structure. Uh, members will note that we've received a number of objections and um, a comment in support of the application. Um, the application is recommended for refusal um, for the reasons set out in the report. And to assist members, we have provided you with a definition of open space that's set out in the National Planning Policy Framework, and that's detailed on your addendum. Um, 
in addition, we've, um, we've put a copy of the applicant's um, submissions that were presented to committee last time together with an officer comment to, to help your assessment of the application. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Uh, Taryn, would you like to speak now, please? Taz, can you start the timer? Okay, um, thank you for allowing me the opportunity to speak. Um, I have no new information to provide, uh, but as the proposer articulated at the last meeting, we thought it was appropriate that one of the objectors um, also spoke to the committee. Uh, we were surprised that the committee didn't support the case officer's recommendation to refuse the planning permission and that this matter has been carried forward. There is a history over the last 30 years of planning applications for this site being submitted. They have always been refused for very valid reasons. I'm therefore representing fellow neighbours and concerned members of the community who have major concerns about this proposed development. It has been argued that there would be no detrimental visibility impact. Whilst we accept that this large building may not be visible when walking along castle walks, it would certainly be visible from the bridge across the river Yarrow, from turf lands and from the rear windows of all the properties on Yarrow Close that back onto castle walks. Villagers currently have open space views in an increasingly built up village environment. Why should we eat into this central village green space with yet more housing when there are other available plots of land on the outskirts of the village which would be acquired, which could be acquired for this type of large residential home project? This large two storey dwelling would offer no benefit to the wider community and would in fact create serious health and safety issues with vehicles having to cross a public footpath to access the site. Castle Walks is well used as a route through the village for families with young children, dog walkers, school children, the elderly and disabled, as a safe route through the village away from the busy A road. Surely having vehicles regularly driving across this route is unacceptable. This public right of way is promoted as part of Croston's Heritage Trail and is well muted that this site may also have significant archaeological relevance. Whilst in recent years there was some occasional fly tipping on this site, this occurred due to a lack of secure gating and suitable maintenance actions by the then owners. This should not be used as a justification to erect a large house on this space instead of the green open space. The Hawthorne hedges have recently been cut back, which is great, but a fence has since been erected on the inside of, of these around the perimeter, which suggests that the landowners may view the Hawthorne hedges as now being outside their land, leaving questions as to who will maintain this area from being overgrown again in the future. I'm hopeful that the new landowners will prove themselves to be responsible, and we are pleased that they have already stated that they are conscious of the environment. Our objections are not personal, and we wish them every success in developing their property plans in a more suitable location. We hope that the committee respect the recommendations of the caseworker, the wishes of the objectors within the Croston village, and that sense prevails. Planning permission should again be refused for this site. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Alison, would you like to speak now, please? Ladies and gentlemen, firstly, I would like to thank those who attended site visit, as it must make my submission easier to understand. I must say I was particularly upset by the addendum 15th of June that was sent to the members and remained unchallenged for many weeks. These allegations are not correct and insinuate that we have a disregard for the planning procedure, which I can assure you is not the case. Late this afternoon, another addendum has been forwarded to you with my comments, but I fear the damage has been done. I would like to reiterate that the so-called hard standing is road gravel and will grass over. I would like to point out that both Croston Parish Council and Croston together were both offered this piece of land before us and they weren't interested in buying it. So one can only assume that they did not feel it has any real value for Croston. In the reports you have regarding the historic value of the site, they are worded with possible, potential and unknown Nothing is definitive. In 2013, the site was subject to an archaeological investigation and their investigations revealed nothing. This is a relatively small piece of land in comparison to the area around that has been developed. The unknown site of the castle appears to be behind two and three castle walk, yet in the development of these sites and the surrounding areas, not one silver coin relic or artifact has been found. It appears these kind of issues are only raised when someone wants to change something, even as if, it's, if it is for the better. 
Historic England had no comment to make on this site, so basically it was not worth their time to investigate. Castle Walk is indeed part of the Heritage Trail, but I cannot understand why our property would have a detrimental effect on the walkway. The first part of the Castle Walk is a roadway, so not a footpath. The pedestrian part is edged on our side by a hedge which has not been maintained, so is not particularly attractive. This would benefit by a lot of tender love and care, which we would intend to do. The other side of the footpath is even less attractive, with a mismatch of multicoloured wooden and concrete two-metre fences. I draw attention to the Heritage Report and the report from Growth Lancashire, one far more in-depth than the other, but submitted by professionals. One assesses the level of harm to be low to moderate, and the other, and I quote, of a vacant overgrown site on the edge of Croston have the opportunity to enhance the significance of the conservation area and its setting. As I stated last time, we have no wish to have a formal garden with traditional flower beds and big lawns, but a house in a meadowland with some trees strategically placed and a small wood to the west side. We know we are custodians of a very special piece of land and given the opportunity, we will make a difference to a sadly neglected piece of land, which in the past has harboured burnt out caravans, old trailers, fly tipping and rubbish. However, to do justice to this land, we need to be in residence and we really do want to embrace the village life. Thank you. Thank you. Right, over to you, members. Councillor Whitaker. Thank you, Chair. I'll, I'll start. Um, I uh, am in favour of the application. Um, we've had several reports. Um, the latest runs to 86 paragraphs. I won't intend to go through all of them, but I don't think, as it was suggested to me, that it is an open and shut case. Um, uh, if it was, we wouldn't need 86 paragraphs to tell us that. Much of the surrounds, much of it, the issue, surrounds the existence of a castle and moat. There is no evidence that on site. There was some reference to the 1845 Ordnance Survey map, but since then it's disappeared. And one of the uh, comments that came in that suggested that it was relevant, suggested that the very name Castle Walks implied that there was a castle there, which is slightly ridiculous. It's a bit like saying Pall Mall in Chorley was connected with Westminster. Um, policy HW2 refers to land and buildings currently or last used as or ancillary to open space or sports and recreation. This has never been that. Um, we went on a site visit. Um, you can hardly see the site. The, the hedges the applicant described is about eight foot high. Um, the officer took us round to uh, Turflands, I think, and it was there in the dim and distant distance, but we couldn't see it. It didn't, it didn't impact in any way for some of us on the site visit that we looked at. Um, since then, uh, and I applaud the officers for their diligence. We've had uh, uh, some papers from Growth Lancashire, which I'd never heard of, um, but they were there purporting to support the officer recommendation. I understand that. Uh, they, they did talk about, when I looked on the website, it was, they've done some work at Astley Hall, which is a big building, which people have looked at and have talked of for many times. Um, the LCC, Archaeological Society, didn't offer anything constructive. Um, but the alternative was a 28-page submission by professional people. Um, and I will just, if you'll allow me, Chair, just to read uh, uh, some of the paragraphs. Um, this site... Um, the basic premise that the proposal site currently impacts a negative negative as a negative impact on the conservation area 
in terms of aesthetic, historic, or evidential communal value. And it was a, was a possibility to develop a site. There's also paragraph 410, which says, um, no harm will accrue to the designated heritage asset, and the proposal will have an enhancing impact on the conservation area. Uh, and therefore, the national policy framework is fully satisfied. It goes on at the conclusion. The heritage statement has explored potential impact of a vacant, overgrown site on the edge of the Croston Conservation Area. The proposal does not contribute to any, in any significance to the conservation, doesn't have a negative contribution to the conservation. Um, an assessment of the proposed scheme has revealed that its design responds positively to the local context, a contemporary design that will sit comfortably in the historic surroundings. And it also schemes that the heritage planning policy is sent out in the Lancashire, Central Lancashire Structural Plan uh, and Chorley Local Plan, as well as the National Policy Framework. We also got, in today's addendum, some other things, which, again, I applaud the officers uh, for doing it, but I'm not quite sure how it's relevant to what we're talking about. It talks about members, um, to assist members Open space, all open space of public value, including not just land, but areas of water, such as rivers, canals, lakes, and reservoirs, which offer important opportunities for sport and recreation and can act as a visual amenity. Nobody is doing anything with the river. That's the only difference that what was said before. And then also on the addendum, we've got uh, a risk of flooding. And we've got a picture submitted by an objector, which shows a bit of standing water on the back of Yarrow Walks. During a period of not uh, extensive rain, but just a consistent rain. I dare say you could find a picture like that on any street in the whole of Chorley Borough when it's been raining for a couple of hours and the roadside drains don't take it. So I can't see the, uh, uh, the issues. The... Flooding issue, which is a major issue in Croston, um, has been dealt with by the Environment Agency, who positively support this and say the proposals by the applicant will deal with anything else. Um, it is not open, it is not highly visible, and it is scrubland. And I think what's on offer here will add to the conservation area scheme. And I'm happy to move approval. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I went on the site visit uh, as well. Um, it's a conservation area. Um, I think the building where it is sited is not really appropriate. It would be better if it was more shielded by the trees that are on the site opposite the gateway. I think it's... Um, not uh, not in the right place for this, but we can only determine this uh, application as it is. Um, I think it's because of the previous refusals, this, the reasons for refusal. I'd, I'd just like to ask the officers: Are they confident if we go to a, if they go to appeal that uh, our re reasons for refusal are strong enough? Adele. Um, yes, thank you, Chair. I mean, clearly, we've assessed it against the provisions of the adopted local plan, which members will be aware comprises the core strategy and the Chorley local plan for the reasons. And, and we've concluded that... Sorry, Chair, I can't hear. Could you speak up, please, Adele? Sorry about that, Councillor Whittaker. Um, I was just explaining that the officers have assessed the application against the provisions of the local plan and have concluded that it's in conflict with the local plan for the reasons set out in the report. Um, I would you know, remind members that this has previously been to appeal and has been assessed as, a, as unacceptable. That is a material consideration as well in the assessment of the application. 
um, you know, we've put a professional recommendation before you, um, and I, I stand by the reasons that we've put down in the report. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Um, unfortunately, I was on holiday and not able to come by this week. Um, just wanted to sort of just reading through it, uh, contradictions. Um, I'd just like to ask uh, officers, page 13, um, paragraph 14, historic England state, they do not wish to offer any comments, and yet Lancashire County Council Archaeology Service comment that further information is required. And I notice on page 12, uh, on consultations, the Parish Council also mentioned uh, the potential of ar archaeology importance. Um, there just seems a bit of contradiction there that Heritage England don't offer any comments, but the County Council Archaeology Service um, requires further information. I just wonder whether that information has been supplied or not. Well, um, yes, thank you, Chair. Um, just to clarify, in the report, the full assessment in terms of its impact on the designated heritage asset and the potential archaeological um, information is detailed in the report for further on at paragraphs um, 47 to um, 67. So all the, the detailed assessment against the provisions of national planning advice is there. With regard to Historic England, um, it's not an application that we that we would we're actually required to consult with with Historic England on, um, and it's not an unusual response. I mean, Historic England deals with applications throughout the country, and that they it was for members' benefit really that you know they they they've come back with a response that basically says it's not our remit to comment. We leave it to to local decision making, and um, so that doesn't necessarily mean it's it's endorsing the proposal. It just means that they, it's not within their remit, so they have no comments to make. Thank you, Chair. Okay. Councillor Hilton. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I think members need to be quite clear that this application has been recommended for refusal for very clear planning reasons. I think, firstly, the site is in designated open space, and we have local plan policies which protect such land from development. Um, the council have a history of resisting development on this land and there is a previous um, appeal by an inspector um, that, that would support this. Um, I do appreciate that not all open space is accessible to the public and this is one of those sites, um, but the open space can actually show a uh, wider value um, of the uh, visual amenity, making it a pleasant and attractive area. Um, it's quite clear from the number of objections that we've received from local residents that they actually do value this open space. Um, the council's own heritage specialists have assessed the uh, planning application and advised us that the development would harm the Croscom conservation area and that it fails the statutory test to preserve it. Um, any harm to this would be reversible and that's why we have these policies in place to protect it. Um, I also note that the uh, submitted heritage statement does not make any assessment of the Motor Castle, but does provide maps uh, which indicate some evidence of its existence. And I think the key issue here really is that we don't have enough information to be confident of the presence or otherwise not presence of the, uh, of the Motor Castle. And we could potentially have a site of national importance here and I strongly believe that it needs a full investigation by specialists and that hasn't been conducted. Um, so if we were to allow a house on this site, we'll actually never know, and that really is a shame. Um, the last reason for refusal is because the site is within flood zone three. Um, we're aware that this area suffers with flooding, um, and we've been advised um, that the development has not been justified at this location because it fails statutory tests of the national planning policy framework, uh, and therefore I would like to propose office recommendations for refusal. Thank you, Chair. Councillor Gabbard. Thank you, Chair. I would like to uh, second Councillor Hilton's proposal. I think it's clearly set out by the officers as the reasons why the refusal is recommended. Um, as set out in paragraph 86, clearly states that it would result in the loss of protected open space, which is contra contrary to policy HW2. Uh, so I would like to second that proposal. 
Thank you. Has anybody else wished to speak? If not, Councillor Boardman, Councillor Marwood. Uh, thank you, Chair. Can you hear me? Do I need to press the button? Right, thank you. Um, yeah, having I mean, looked through the information, there's a lot of it there to digest. Um, I am broadly in favour of this application. However, um, we, we should, in some ways, congratulate the applicant uh, for a sympathetic and well-designed single dwelling on the site, after what we've seen before. Um, it is agricultural and contemporary in its style, um, and it's got the use of natural materials. Uh, however, as of committee members, it is very difficult for us to decide against our own officer's recommendations that are set out on page 11, uh, numbers 1 to 4, uh, which clearly tell us the reasons for refusal, refusal in line with our policy. Um, clearly, the residents in the parish council are against application. Uh, however, I'd also be minded to remind them that uh, this is uh, an application which is probably the second on this site and is only for one dwelling. And uh, we don't know, we cannot control what applications may come in the future. Um, I'm therefore undecided, um, and I'll wait to hear what the other um, committee members have got to say before I make a decision. Um, I'd like to draw the attention to the future open space review that may or may not happen as part of the local plan uh, that's coming. Um, it'd be interesting to know what happens to this space within the next local plan, uh, and whether it is uh, still seen as a piece of valuable local land. Um, I think to the applicant, it is probably the wrong site for them to develop out with this type of proposal. I think the proposal is a fantastic one, and I think in any other setting, uh, rural-based, it would be um, very welcome, um, certainly that style of dwelling. Um, and uh, I wish them well for the future in finding another site if it doesn't go through. But if it did go through, uh, and I'd like to put a condition in place which meant that uh, a certain amount of archaeological dig was undertaken prior to any development that came forward. I don't know if that's something we can put in as a condition if it did actually get passed, uh, whether it's for um, for this uh, for this group here or at appeal. Um, I'll, um, I'll ask uh, the planning officer to comment on that. Thank you, Chair. Um, in this instance, Councillor Boardman, that's not being advocated by the archaeological team at, at Lancashire because essentially um, it would mean that the, the archaeological information would simply be recorded um, and it would it would fetter the applicant's ability to implement the scheme. So if if members do um, vote to approve the application, then we'd, I think we'd have to delegate the decision to the, the director to seek further clarification from um, Lancashire County Council because they do want the opportunity to, um, to make it very clear that that information has got to be submitted in full to inform the decision-making process. Right, okay. And just to come back on that, Chair, that, that's fine. Thanks, Adele, for clearing that up. But I, I was looking through the information to see if there was any guidance on what the applicant should provide. Um, I, I couldn't see that, uh, and, I'm, and I'm, I don't know if I've missed it or not, but um, if I was the applicant sitting here thinking, okay, well, what is it that I would need to provide in order to uh, mitigate the issues with an archaeological aspect? Um, do you want to advise on that, please? Um, the general advice about archaeological information is set out in national planning pra practice mm -hmm. so the the applicant's own advisor should be able to advise on that it's not really for me to, to advise the applicant on that and um, we will respond to the information that's provided but ultimately we will rely on the advice from Lancashire County Council in that respect but I would anticipate it may involve some file holds it may involve some thermal imaging mm -hmm. um, and, and that kind of information but that's a, that's a very specialist field so it's not really appropriate for me to, to confirm exactly what they do require. Okay, Councillor Marwood. Thank you, Chair. Um, thank you, Adele, for that. That was, there was some, some of that I was going to ask for as well. Um, I am still a little torn between uh, yes and no at this, this, this moment in time. I accept conservation area, it's protected open space, it's, it's got uh, it's community space. Um, but I'm a little, I'm, uh, I'm always a little upset by suddenly the locals suddenly realise what they've got when it's almost too late. Um, a pleasant and attractive area, it may be at the moment, but I, get, I, I gather it's not always been a pleasant and attractive area if it's had uh, caravans and rubbish and all the rest of it. And so it's been cleared and it's been improved by this applicant. But I accept that 
um, as Councillor Heaton said, that perhaps they could have a rethink in, in their design, or rather the position, and that whereas um, one of the sites we went and visited, it was it was it, it would stand out in its current position, and I'm sure maybe they could rethink that. They might perhaps be able to come back. But I would ask the local population and perhaps the parish council that uh, they need to look at these areas of uh, open space and, uh, and and do something with them and sort of make and look after them and not just come running when it's almost too late and say, oh, there used to be a, uh, a castle there and so on. And I accept that we, they should find out and, and so forth. But uh, um, um, I'll leave it at that point, but I'm, I'm still not quite sure. I can follow the... Um, the officer's recommendation uh, to a point, and as uh, um, has been said by Councillor Hilton, um, that's the recommendation. But we go against recommendations. I probably won't in this case, but I would ask, uh, say, the population and the parish to think more about the, their open spaces, not just in Croston, but in other areas, and do look to uh, make sure that they are kept in a good condition so that... Uh, this sort of thing doesn't happen in the future. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else wish? If not, I shall move to the vote because I've had a proposal for approval, but no one's seconded it, and I have had a proposal and a second for the officer recommendation. All those in favour of the officer recommendation, please show. Okay, it has. All those against? Abstentions. Okay, Taz. Thank you, Chair. Uh, the committee has decided to refuse planning commission in respect of the proposal for the erection of one detached dwelling at land 60 metres of number three Castle Walk, Austin, for the reasons outlined in the report. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you. Item 3B has been withdrawn. So we're going on to item 3C, Parklands High School, Southport Road. Pages 53 to 88, Ian Crossland is going to present this item. Uh, it's recommended plan commission is granted, subject to conditions. And I have four registered speakers, objector uh, Georgina White, supporter Steve Mitchell, award councillor Sarah Ainsworth, and the applicant Brendan P. Lake. Uh, Georgina, Steve, councillor Ainsworth, Brent, can you confirm that you can hear? I can. It's great. Yes, yeah, I can. Yeah. Thank you for everybody voting. I can. Yeah. Okay. Steve. Thank you. Ian, can you present the report, please? Uh, yes, thank you, Chair. This application seeks planning permission for the erection of an inflatable multi sport air dome, including a concrete ring beam for anchoring the dome, resurfacing of the tennis courts, and other inf associated infrastructure and plant. The application site is located within the grounds of Parkland High School which is within the settlement area of Chorley. The, uh, the air dome will be located on an area of hard surface tennis courts to the south of Astley Park and Great Wood. Um, a committee site visit was carried out uh, yesterday to view the site. The, uh, the framework and local plan are supportive of new facilities for, for sports and recreation, subject to an assessment of their impact on the character of the area, nature conservation value, residential amenity and highway safety. The proposed air dome would be most clearly visible from Southport Road um, and from Hampton Close and uh, the paths within Great Wood where uh, views would be obscured um, or filtered uh, from those areas. It would be more clearly visible from Southport Road. The, uh, the development would introduce a new form of building to the area, although its scale would be commensurate with that of the existing school buildings which, uh, with which it would be associated. As such, it would form a coherent part of the collection of buildings on the school site. The dome will be lit in the evenings, which would make it visible during darker hours. However, its hours of use would reflect those of the adjacent floodlit artificial pitch, which is greater in scale, and therefore the visual impact will be less pronounced. On this basis, the development is not considered to result in a harmful adverse impact on the character of the area. The application site currently comprises an area of tarmac tarred surfacing, However, it does fall within the buffer zone of Great Wood, which is an ancient woodland. The development would involve the digging of a one metre deep trench that would be filled with concrete to create the ring beam by which the air dome will be anchored. 
Um, the council's tree officer has assessed the, uh, the site and has confirmed that the development would most likely fall outside the root protection area of any of the trees that lie within the ancient woodland due to the separation distance and the, uh, the, the increased level of the site relative to the woodland. Um, although the risk to the ancient woodland uh, trees is low, it is recommended that a condition be attached to any grant of planning permission to ensure that, that works that are carried out are carried out in line with tree protection measures. Uh, the Council's ecology advisors have assessed the development and do not consider that the development could have any adverse harm to the woodland habitat or any um, protected species. It's not considered that the air dome itself would have any unacceptable impacts on residential amenity and the Council's environmental health officer has confirmed that they have no objection in relation to any potential noise and disturbance issues that might be associated with the use of the facility. A uh, transport statement has been submitted in support of the development which has been assessed by Lancashire County Council Highways who anticipate that the proposed development would not have a significant impact on highway safety, capacity or amenity in the immediate vicinity of the site over and above the existing situation. Um, the site is located to the south of Astley Hall and Park, which are designated heritage assets. The, uh, the impact on these assets has been assessed by the Council's Heritage Advisors, Growth Lancashire, who uh, concluded that the proposed development would not cause any identifiable harm to the significance provided by the setting of these designated heritage assets, as the site is clearly visibly divorced from those heritage assets and has no historic um, associated historic significance with the application site. The drainage aspects of the development has been considered by the lead local flood authority who consider that there be no harmful impacts on surface water runoff subject to the provision of a sustainable drainage strategy uh, which will be secured by condition. Um, all issues are covered in detail within the committee report. Overall the proposed development is considered to be acceptable in accordance with the policies of the development plan and is recommended for approval subject to the conditions set out in the report. Thank you Chair. Uh, thanks, Ian. Um, Georgina, would you like to speak now, please? Tell yes, us. can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Okay, you thank you, Chair. Okay. Thank you. I'm speaking tonight on behalf of 51 residents of the neighbouring estate, the Friends of Ashley Park and 1,500 petition signatories. Our objections are, firstly, visual amenity. This dome is more than twice the height of a double-decker bus and significantly higher than the nearest house. The dome is white and for five months each year, there will be no leaves on the trees to obscure it in any way. Tens of thousands exercise in the adjacent woodland each year, free at the point of use, significantly greater numbers than will use the dome. This dome will have an overbearing impact on park users and residents. Secondly, no noise. The dome is eight metres from the nearest property and just 20 metres from the Astley Park Trail. No consideration has been given to park users enjoying this peaceful place. The dome's machinery will run for 24 hours every day. No restrictions have been placed on operating hours or permitted activities. Therefore, noise from dome operations will be heard 83 hours every week, including music, as approval is sought for fitness and social events. The Environmental Health Officer acknowledged the difficulty in gathering specific data to assess this dome's impact Effectively, this is guesswork and the residents and park users must live with the consequences. Thirdly, traffic. No consideration has been given to the multiple effect of school events occurring simultaneously after 5 p.m., such as open evenings on sports pitch and hall hire. Neighbours have provided photographic evidence of the parking issues caused by such evening events. They show chaotic, dangerous parking scenes which limit emergency vehicle access. The width of the car park entrance is restricted. This increases the likelihood that users will park on the estate to avoid queuing. No conditions are set for car park security, which is immediately behind residents' houses. Fourthly, ecology. This dome, according to governance gu government guidelines, is simply too close to the ancient woodland. Many independent organisations and experts have objected, including Lancashire Wildlife Trust. Despite claims to the contrary, this construction will be disrupted to trees, plants and wildlife. The dome's huge shadow will deprive the delicate ecosystem of precious sunlight. How can a safe decision be made without a tree survey, a bat report, a carbon footprint analysis and a competence ecology assessment? In conclusion, both the planning process and lack of consultation have been very troubling here. 
only four residents were consulted for what is effectively a commercial leisure centre in a very sensitive location. The issues I have raised tonight are just the tip of the iceberg and we strongly object. I will leave you with the words of one objector who states, many residents near me, which is near the woodland, are heartbroken. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. Thank you. That's Simon. Steve, are you there? Uh, yes, uh, okay, Steve. Okay. Here at Parklands High School, we strive for continual pursuit of excellence. We aim to provide all pupils with the best possible opportunities, irrespective of social background, race, gender, disability, belief and sexual orientation to make a positive contribution to our society. We believe in equality for everyone, irrespective of our differences. The culture of our school community is one of the inclusion and diversity where all those connected to and in contact with the school feel proud of their identity and ability to participate fully in the life of school. The Sports Air Dome proposed on the existing hard standing surface in partnership with Athletico Sports will allow us to broaden our curriculum and provide a much needed consistency to the 1200 pupils following the COVID-19 pandemic. With this I mean the lessons won't be affected by bad weather and we can educate and train the pupils to a much better standard and level because we're not worrying about the weather. The pupils will be able to use the facility for an array of different PE lessons. The impact of having a great, broad and enriched PE curriculum is immeasurable. Physical activity has a major physical, social and emotional health benefits and the proposed Sports Air Dome will provide a facility that will serve the pupils of Parklands as well as our shared community superbly by giving the community something it's currently missing. I believe greatly in this project alongside all the overwhelming support we've received today, which includes supporting statements from the English FA, England Netball, the England Cricket Board, the professional sports people who've attended Parklands High School and Chorley residents. It is a positive to note that the Council's planning officer has completed a robust planning application to reassure the local residents and objectors that all the concerns have been thoroughly dealt with by the relevant consultants in line with the planning policy framework. The planning officer has identified the recreational potential of the existing sports playing facility and the social benefits in terms of increasing opportunities for sports and recreation in supporting healthy lifestyles. In what has been such a difficult time for all, this opportunity will again demonstrate the true values of sport, which will bring together families, friends and community all under one roof. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Kent Rainsworth. Thanks, Chair. Um, I'm, for those who don't know, my name is Councillor Rainsworth. I'm one of the uh, ward councillors for Chorley North West Ward. Myself and my ward colleague, Councillor Matthew Lynch, are aware of residents' objections and concerns regarding the application to erect an inflatable multi sports air dome at Parkins High School in Chorley. I would like to share some of the residents' concerns regarding this application. Number one, Woodland being destroyed. Having looked at the application and noting the comment about trees, namely the proposal will likely require the severance of some tree roots on the northern edge of the play court, residents are concerned understandably about local woodlands being destroyed as the development borders onto Astley Park. Number two, traffic and parking. Residents are concerned about the increase in parking around the area if the application was to go ahead. There is already a build-up of traffic around the school during core times, and if this application were to go ahead, residents concerned that the people who use the airdome may be more inclined to park on the surrounding streets if the car park was full. Number three, animal habitat being destroyed. Residents are concerned that if the development goes ahead, this will lead to several animals losing their habitat in the woods surrounding this development, which is currently home to several species. I understand there have been several objections and comments submitted by residents regarding this application. This evening, I request members consider opposing the officer's recommendations and refuse the application due to the residential nature of the locality and the potential noise and disturbance associated within with pedestrian and vehicular traffic movements that will be generated throughout the use of this development. It's considered that there will be a harmful impact on the immunity of the neighbouring occupiers. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Brendan, would you like to speak now, please? Okay. Kaz, do you want to uh, start the timer? Thanks. Okay. 
Uh, can you hear me? Uh, good evening, all. Um, thank you for joining us this evening, and thanks to the council for also going and taking the time to visit the site. Um, of course, my name is Rendon Play, founder of Atletico Buckshaw Futsal Club. So I started Buckshaw, Atletico Buckshaw Futsal uh, just over three years ago in a local community centre. We quickly outgrew this location, uh, which has meant a continuous struggle to find a suitable venue. Today we have over 150 young children from our community enjoying keeping fit and learning life, schools, life skills. Currently we also have a, late, a waiting list of more than 100 young children which we cannot facilitate due to the lack of facilities in the area. As a coach and also a parent of three young children, I see the disappointment week after week in the winter months when matches are called off, 4, 4G pitches frozen, grass pitches flooded, and not to mention young children not enjoying the playing conditions coming off freezing and wet. The air dome is a tangible way to combat dropout rates, particularly among young children in the winter months when the weather and its effect on outdoor pitches, pitches is a barrier to a continuous involvement. The impact of COVID-19 pandemic has also significantly impacted our community, especially our young people, reducing physical activity level, levels, leaving people disconnected, anxious, and lots of uncertainty. We believe that every young child has a dream. Our club philosophy is welcome to the dream, knowing that sports has the power to change the world and create tomorrow's legal leaders. Uh, futsal is a sport in its own right, and also the fastest growing indoor sport in the world. Uh, again, it's been identified by various governing bodies in England, the FA Sport England, that there continues to be a shortage of quality indoor sports facilities. Um, our project has now developed to a point where we can no longer use sports halls as they're too small and do not meet certain safety guidelines, placing our young children at risk of serious injury. Quote from Langs.gov, um, some of you may be aware that it's estimated between 2018 and 2043, the population of Chorley will increase by 17.8%, the highest predicted growth rate by some way in Lancashire. The number of households in the authorities projected to increase by substantial 24.4 between 2018 and 2043. Having an indoor sports located on existing school grounds utilizing existing outstanding surface ensures we will develop alliance with other sports clubs in our community, i.e. netball, cricket, basketball. Um, and it's also the objectives of the scheme will now have also noted that all their concerns have been answered by the relevant, relevant professionals providing the necessary factual data based information, i.e. ecology, transport, trees, heritage, asset, noise, lights will, as noted in the, transport, in the officer's report. There's never been a better time to provide our young people with an opportunity to actively participate in a sport of their choice in an environment that's suitable for all. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, over to you, members. Uh, Councillor G. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, I understand both sides of the argument here, and um, I, I do feel for them. But I do... I do have problems with it. Um, per, first of all, the height of it, um, 11 metres. I'm looking now on um, the, the section plans, um, page 82, uh, yeah, 82. <clears throat> it, it's um, 11 metres, that's approximately 35 feet. Um, if you look at the section of it, it's higher than the houses that are, are um, on there. The other thing that I'm worried about, that it is right up to the um, Ashley Park, right up to the, um, the fencing. It will be white. Now, as we all know, Ashley Park, full of trees, it's green. That is going to stand out like a sore thumb in an area that um, we're proud of. It's, it's got the trees, it's got the wildlife, it's got the walkway, we've spent a lot of money in Ashley Park, and then you've got this on the other side of the fence, white. If it had been green or in color, in keeping with the area, I might have um, been happy with it. The other thing that um, worried me is that it's not traditional. It's not brick, stone, timber. So it is a, a material. And I don't know how thick the material is, but I can imagine that um, you're going to get light. There'll be no noise insulation in it, no light insulation. Imagine the lighting that's in there with the white build, the white um, thing, it's gonna come through the building, so you're gonna get um, um, 
noise, um, light pollution in the area. Again, I don't know. I just presume this. You're going to get, I don't know how many children running up and down there, and you know what children like, and God bless them, they do make a noise, and I have no problem with that. But can you imagine all the children there, and I can't imagine this being um, insulated for noise. So you're going to, you're going to have a lot of noise um, pollution coming in there. Now, my problem is I can't visualize this. I can't. I went on the side with this. It's a massive um, dome. It's a massive area. There are, I was told, there are two near us in Bolton. I, I, I think that's correct. I was just wondering, just to ease my mind and see, to try to comprehend what it is, is it possible for us to, or we went on the side with you yesterday, is it possible for us to go to visit one of these, um, these places so members can see what they're like, how thick they are, what the noise pollution is, what the um, light pollution is, um, how it affects the residents around that area, because I can't, at the moment, I can't um, grasp it. So I'm just wondering whether it's possible that we could visit one of the ones in Bolton to, to see. So thank you, Chair. Well, you want to come um, thank you, Chair. Um, I hear what you say, Councillor G. Um, I'm mindful that you might be comparing apples and pears. Sometimes if you go to some of the alternative sites, the reason we asked for a site visit um, before this application was considered was so that members had the opportunity to, to get a feel for what this app, this proposal would look like on the application site. Um, you know, the application is supported by plans. You know, members are very experienced in terms of being able to, to understand the concept of, of what the development would look like. Um, I'm not convinced you would get a, an appreciation necessarily of, of the noise when you're comparing light with like I think some of these other um, domes are in potentially more built up areas with, with higher levels of background noise as well. Um, obviously, you know, it, it, it's up to members, but you know, maybe you know, let the debate continue. And Thank you, Chair. Um, seen as a waiting list for children for the use of this facility, um, I was a little bit undecided, um, but I'm very much prone to encourage children to take on um, sports rather than sit behind computer desks. And, um, I do think it's in the school grounds, there are school buildings there. Um, so I, I broadly support the office recommendation. Uh, thanks, Chair. <clears throat> um, I, well, I'm going to put my 100% backing behind the officer's recommendation because I think it's a fantastic proposal. Um, it's in, a, in the grounds of a school, which is already a very, very noisy environment, um, I know. Um, it's, on a, it's on the base of a tennis court, and if the school so provided, so wanted to, could play tennis till 10 o'clock in the evening if the light was just uh, let, let them do that. Um, I couldn't think of anywhere better to put it, to be perfectly honest with you, because um, we, we've seen these structures before. Uh, I go to a place on holiday and look at go in Pembrokeshire called Pem Bluestone Park, which is a, um, a, a forest park, basically, and there's one of these structures which houses the very large indoor swimming pool in their dome. Uh, and it looks absolutely fantastic against trees because it's a very natural uh, shape in its form. Um, we could be looking at an application here for a three-storey masonry and steel building, which uh, is a traditional sports hall, which in all honesty, I think that the residents would be in absolute uproar about if, it, if that came forward. So um, I actually really, really like the design of the building. I think it's fantastic. Um, we also have to think about the eco project um, down in um, Somerset, Cornwall. Uh, again, they are air domes and they're set within a quarry, uh, and they're set within the rural area. So um, to say that they don't fit in is, uh, I think, is, um, it, it may not fit in this setting because it's uh, urban, but actually it, uh, it'll probably complement the, the area a lot better. Um, I, I was struggling to find out where the damage to the local, to the, to the woodland, the ancient woodland was. Um, there is reference on the documents for a one-metre-deep uh, trench, basically, footing uh, to hold this down. 
Uh, but again, it's off the edge of the woodland and not actually in the woodland mm -hmm. itself. Uh, there may be uh, some damage to roots, but most tree roots are significantly deeper than one metre, uh, especially on ancient woodland. So um, I think, you know, with regards to that, I don't think it carries much weight in the argument. Um, so therefore, I, I'd really like to support this application. Anything to get children out and about, um, playing sport, um, and certainly playing sport in the evening where they, where they normally are sitting in front of their PlayStations and Xboxes. Um, so I 100% support it, and I will uh, second Councillor Francis' recommendation and support the offer. Thank you, Councillor Whitaker. Thank you, Chair. Uh, can I say the acoustics in this room are awful? I can't follow all the things that have been said. And the sooner we get back in the council chamber, the better it will be. But having said that, I'm going to vote against this application. It says in the report that this dome is going to be 11 metres high and only 8 metres from the rear garden of the nearest property. And it says, and I'm sure somebody's tongue in cheek, it would not be overly obtrusive. I'm not sure anybody in this room would want a 40 foot building 8 metres from the back garden. So I'm not happy about this application. I'm going to vote against it. Uh, thank you, Chair. Yeah, I went on a site visit yesterday. It was uh, very informative, also very wet. Um, I'm very much in favour of the, the principle of this kind of development in creating sport facilities for school children um, and indeed Chorley in the wider area. I don't so much have an issue with it being a non-traditional material building. Um, I do have some concerns about noise, but they have been addressed by the officers, so um, and we have to take that at face value. Um, what I am concerned about is the increased intensity of activity in the part of the site, particularly beyond school hours in such close proximity to the residents. I think it's on Hampton Close. Um, I appreciate the artificial pitch is already open to the uh, public up till about 10 o'clock, but that's 150 metres further away, and this dome would be considerably closer. Um, the users would be parking at the back of the houses on Hampton Close and would walk down to the dome from that area. And I do think this would result in additional noise and disturbance from, um, in, in that respect to local residents from cars coming and going, people shouting, potentially referees, whistles, etc. Um, uh, so I, I think when residents are hoping to relax on a nice summer's evening and they're getting um, uh, that kind of noise, I think I, I would be uh, a, bit, a bit hesitant about that. Um, the proposed dome is an incredibly large structure, as Councillor Whitaker has said. It is 11 metres in height. Um, it would be quite well screened by the school buildings from the surrounding roads, but it would be clearly visible from the footpaths, particularly in Great Wood, um, in part of Asser Park. Um, I think it would actually sit at a higher level to the footpaths, and, and it's quite an imposing feature, really, um, particularly in the wintertime when... Uh, uh, when when the leaves aren't on the trees, you'd be able to see it quite clearly, especially as it's a big white or cream um, building. I do think that the impact on the character of the area is, is bordering on unacceptable. When viewed from Great Wood, um, uh, it, it would be an incongruous backdrop to, to an ancient woodland and not really of natural character. Um, it's a great idea, but it's not the right area for me. For this reason, I don't feel I can support the officer recommendations and I'd like to move that the application has been refused. And can I just be clear on the grounds for that? Um, uh, the grounds are, I, I believe the proposed air dome would result in increased intensity of activity in the part of the site in the evenings and outside school times that would result in noise and disturbance, which would be harmful to the local community of the neighbouring residents and occupiers. And that would be contrary to policy HW1 and BNE1 of the Chorley Local Plan. And also the proposed air dome would be harmful to the visual amenity and character of Great Wood by the reason of its size, scale and incongruous appearance. And therefore it is again in po uh, contradiction to policy HW1 and BNE1 of the Chalk Local Plan. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Hilton. I've got Councillor Beaver and then Councillor G. Councillor Beaver. Thank you, Chair. I've been pressing this button like mad all night and it's not going anywhere. Um, I equally am in favour of additional sports for the young people and I, I commend uh, the applicant for bringing this proposal forward but I do have a number of concerns some of which we've heard already tonight. It says in the report that uh, highways um, is acceptable and yet in one of their letters they say that there's a, a report been done whereby there's been no accidents within 200 metres of that school in the last few years and they comment that is not correct. So therefore, 
the traffic that's going to be coming in of an evening constitutes a longer and more additional problem to traffic movement. They also mentioned within the report that the proposal says there are other crossings. There's only one crossing in that area, so I don't know to which to refer to. United Utilities asked for a separate way for wastewater to go. Now, I accept that the rain's going to come down and hit the roof. If it hits the floor, it can go one way or the other and not flood. When it hits this door, on one side, it's going to go all down one side. It's 11 metres tall, and that will cause an amount of gravity and force. More water hitting the ground, going into the wood, going into the river, going down to um, Ashley, what's it called, the um, Akers Lodge, and we all know the damage that's been happened there recently, which closed the road and the bridge, and it nearly collapsed. In fact, parts of it did. So well, that's a concern. The ecology report says that there should be a, a bat survey. Now, we went on the site visit last night, and we talked about bats. And we said, we said, well, it's not going to affect the bats. How do we know? There's not a report being done. It's not the job of the report to say that. Car parking facilities. We arrived at the gate last night. Could we get in? The gate's opened and they bounce back when someone gets in the way. We walked in, the gate's closed. So you drive in your car as one of these people that come for the sports and you park up. The gate's closed behind you. You walk down to the field. When we were walking back, we couldn't get out. So the question is what's going to be the management system of those gates? Is a school going to give an electronic tag to every person? No. Is there going to be a teacher on duty in and out? No. Are the gates going to be open all night? Well, that then presents a risk. Now, I understand that the football pitch down the road is already existing in this. But I didn't see it. I've never seen any cars parked there in the school grounds. So the threat of people parking outside the school is greater. The noise from people walking from the cars and banging the cars is going to be greater. We mentioned about futsal. It's five aside for anybody else who doesn't know what it is. But this place isn't just for futsal. It's for football, tennis, badminton, you name a sport that involves a ball or a any racket sport, and it's there. From 5 o'clock to 10 o'clock, 365 days of the year. And then on top of that, they're going to have after-school clubs, they're going to have tournaments, they're going to have competitions and public festivals. 365 days of the year. Now, as it was mentioned earlier on, that kids can be very, very noisy. So it's going to be very, very noisy, 365 days of the year, bank holidays, Christmas, Easter, till 10 o'clock. So the question I've got, I've got to keep an open mind, is what are the answers to these questions? The material we touched on, we don't know how thick it is. Three microns, 0.3 of a millimetre. Let's just exaggerate, let's call it three millimetres. So when you were playing football, down at the end nearest to the houses, and you've got 10 people, because it's five aside, the ref blows his whistle. Do we think that's not going to be heard by the houses? When they score a goal and the team go mad, do we think they're not going to hear that? So I've, I've got a lot of questions on this. And, and just coming back to the, uh, should we go and see another one somewhere else? Imagine something that's massive. Then imagine something bigger. That's what this is going to be. Thank you, Jen. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, I've listened to all the arguments I'm for and against now, and um, I have come to a conclusion. And I'd like to second um, Councillor Hilton's um, um, for a um, refusal. And the main thing is um, light pollution, noise pollution. Um, a dome that's 
far too big for the, for, for the um, surrounding area. It's intrusive on Astley Park. Um, no matter how you put it, no matter how what you say, it is right up to the boundary of Astley Park. And, um, and I can imagine in winter, when when, when there's no leaves, that that's going to be visible for a long, long way into the park. The, the houses, um, they won't be able to, um, it's open Saturdays, Sundays, bank holidays. They won't be able to um, have an enjoyable time in, in the back gardens, um, having a barbecue, because all you'll hear is people en enjoying themselves in there. I'm not disputing that, they will be enjoying themselves, but they will be putting the residents um, at a disadvantage. If it had been where the football pitch is down, further down, I would have accepted it. it, it that would have been better. But where the position is, I don't like it. So, uh, as I said, I've listened to for and against the argument, and I've come down. But um, I'm happy. I would l like to go for refusal, and I'll second council and um, proposal. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Is that everybody who wishes to speak has spoke? Um, oh, well, I'm just going to move to the vote. Sorry, Chair, I just want to add something. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not against this particular type of development. And uh, if this application does get refused, I would encourage the applicant to work with the council and with the council officers to actually find an alternative site within Chorley to do that. And, and, and I think that would be a great thing for Chorley. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, I've got a proposal and a second for the officer recommendation, proposing a second for refusal for the reasons that Alex stated. I'll take the amendment first. All those in favour of refusing this application, please show. Those against? Don't look at anybody else. Any abstentions? Okay, Taz. Thank you, Chair. Um, members have uh, decided to refuse the um, application for a transmission um, on the basis of the grounds that were provided by Councillor Britton uh, in respect of uh, the proposed add on will result in an increase in intensity of activity on the part of the site into evenings and outside school times and will result in noise and disturbance which would be harmful to the amenity of neighbouring residential occupiers, contrary to policies HW1 and BNE1, the local plan, and the proposed air dome would be harmful to the visual amenity and character of Great Wood by reason of its scale, size and incongruous appearance and its contrary to policies HW1 and BNE1 of the Chorley local plan. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thanks, Taz. Right. Moving on, let's see. Item D, Bookshaw Hall, Night Avenue, pages 89 to 118, with an update on your addendum. Uh, although the recommendation stays the same. Adele's going to present this item, and there are no registered speakers. Adele. Thank you, Chair. Um, this application seeks planning permission for four dwellings with garages and an additional triple garage to serve Bookshaw Hall. The site is located within the grounds of Bookshaw Hall, which is in Bookshaw Village. Bookshaw Hall is a Grade II star listed building that was within the former Royal Ordnance Factory site, and it was used as office accommodation but abandoned after the war and marked for demolition. However, this never took place and it was listed in 1975, though its condition has continued to deteriorate until some works were carried out in 2003 to make it wind and water tight at the time that bookshaw was beginning to be developed. Planning permission and listed building consent were granted in 2006 to bring the building back into use as a dwelling and these approved works have been commenced so these permissions actually remain extant. The current application before members this evening um, seeks to um, develop the four houses in the grounds um, which the applicant would then sell to fund the renovations to the hall to make it suitable for modern living as a dwelling house. Exton Parish Council have commented on the application and um, stressed that the development of the houses should be tied to the completion of Bookshaw Hall. Um, 
as this is a Grade 2 star listed building, it does fall for Historical England to be consulted um, formally. Um, and they have not raised any objection on heritage grounds and have stated that they welcome and commend the approach of the owner to reinvest the proceeds from the development into the hall and complete its refurbishment, bringing back a nationally significant building into use and safeguarding it for, future, for the future. Um, some minor points on design and layout have been um, suggested by Historic England and the case officer, as well as the council's conservation advisors, and we have received amended plans that reflect those um, amendments that have been sought. It's acknowledged that the proposal will result in a low level of harm to the setting of Buckshaw Hall, but it's considered that the considerable public benefit of the scheme um, to be secured via a Section 106 legal agreement can give, be given significant weight against this. Um, the proposal will safeguard the future of the building and bring it back into use. It's therefore recommended that the application is approved subject to conditions and a Section 106 agreement that ensures the dwellings are not sold, leased or occupied prior to the renovation of Buckshaw Hall as approved by the 2006 commissions um, is being undertaken. Thank you, Claire. Uh, thank you, Chair. As this doesn't seem to be a controversial application, and it's um, uh, from the briefing earlier, the officers are quite happy with the, the plan. I, I will move that this uh, recommend, move the recommendation. Good year. Uh, happy to second. Um, I remember whether it's two or three years ago, we went on a site visit. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a very nice old hall, you know, you know, surrounded by Buckshaw. It's, it's quite strange when you go and visit it. And the original uh, designs and plans really were, were not suitable. They virtually enveloped the whole hall. I think this is the best design we're going to get, and I think it's better we see the hall survive, because if something isn't done, uh, we're going to lose it, and that would be a shame. So I'm uh, happy to second. Mr. Chair? Yeah, that's why I press this button. Me too, Chair. I'm going to press the button. It's old-fashioned, but I find it works. Um. What's it on? It's on this yeah. This came to us before. And we um, we refused it. And I, am I wrong? Um, yeah, we did have an application previously, and uh, members deferred consideration of that application pending the site visit. But prior to the consideration of the application, it was actually withdrawn. So no formal decision was made on the previous application. It was recommended for approval at that time as well. Yes, I recall. And um, on the, there was a lot of objection about it because of the overdevelopment of the site, the proximity of it to a neighbour. The previous application um, wasn't determined by the council so we can give it no consideration in the assessment of this application but I do recall we did receive objections and some of those objections related to the, the siting and the layout of the proposal and the, the revised proposals that we've received have, have overcome some of those concerns and as officers and the, um, the statutory consultees and our own professional advisors are happy with the proposal it's an improved solution to what was previously going to be considered. Thank you. I can't, I can't get the hang of this chair, I'm afraid. The light keeps going off. Um, I'd just like to say, yeah, I, I support the application. Um, th this application is significantly different from the last one that came forward. Um, the houses are significantly smaller. Uh, they're spaced further away from the main hall building, which I think it looks, uh, looks great. And it, it, it's one of the comments that we made last time that the hall needs to stand on its own ground. So um, I'm really pleased with that. Uh, that's come forward. They are a little bit traditional for my liking, but um, uh, I can't pick and choose what goes on the site. Um, I'd, I'd, I'd just like to um, uh, welcome the addition of a condition number seven, which is uh, the one which restricts the permitted development extension of the dwellings um, due to the proximity of the listed building. I think, uh, I think that's very important in this context. Uh, so yeah, really happy.
So, have I any against? Any abstentions? Excellent. Item 3E has been withdrawn. So we go on to item F, 209 Blackburn Road, PP, pages 119 to 138, with an update on your addendum. Ian's going to present this item. Uh, planning permission is granted, subject to conditions. And I have two registered speakers, my objector, Matthew Harper, and the applicant, Aaron J. Fuller. Matthew, Aaron, can you uh, hear and speak? Yes, I can. Okay. Ian, can you present the report, please? Yes, uh, thank you, Chair. This application seeks planning permission for the change of use of the building to, to offices and the erection of a single-storey rear extension. The application site comprises a semi-detached building that falls within the Wheelton Local Centre, as designated by the Chorley Local Plan. Although the proposed use would not provide retail, banking or cafe type uses as encouraged by the local plan in local centres, it would not result in the loss of any retail space and would make some contribution to the vitality of the local centre, promoting custom and footfall. Um, it, would not, it would therefore be uh, compatible with the aims of the uh, local centre policy as set out in the local plan, uh, which seeks to, uh, to, to maintain the vitality and viability of local centres. The proposal would introduce a low intensity use between existing commercial premises and it's considered that there, will, that there will be no harmful impacts on neighbour amenity through uh, disturbance. The proposed extension will be contained to the rear of the building and would have no unacceptable impacts on neighbour amenity or the character of the area. It's noted that a number of concerns have been raised in relation to parking availability and congestion. Um, the development would result in uh, a requirement for three off-road parking spaces Two spaces will be provided to the rear of the property, uh, whilst there are opportunities for on-street parking along uh, Blackburn, Blackburn Road within a short distance of the site. Um, Lancashire County Council Highways have assessed the proposal and are of the opinion that there will be no detrimental impact on highway safety and capacity in the immediate vicinity of the site. Um, overall, the proposed development is considered to be in accordance with the policies of the development plan and is recommended for approval subject to conditions. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Ian. Uh, Matthew, would you like to speak now, please? Uh, yeah, thank you for letting me speak. Um, as owner of uh, Three Kenyon Lane, I own the plot of land which uh, leads from the road, uh, from Kenyon Lane itself, um, and is marked as the access to the re proposed rear parking area. Uh, previous plans submitted for this um, building were for one parking space. Um, and this one is uh, for two, which we believe to be um, optimistic. Um, it's not particularly safe to reverse cars out onto Kenyon Lane um, because entering that parking bay, you would have to reverse back out onto the, onto the highway. There, there's usually obstructed, um, uh, obstructed access due to obviously the, the local businesses nearby and also the residents. Um, as mentioned before, there is a lack of parking, but cars parked go into the tea room, uh, the nail bar, the hairdressers, the physio, etc. often go over the white lines, making it almost impossible to actually get out. There's no way of turning around when entering that parking area that's proposed there. Um, on a recent visit, my wife met the architect who thought they could uh, enter our um, garden area to turn around but that has gates on uh, at the time they were open as our children play up and down um, that driveway with the neighbouring property number one Kenyon Lane um, and that's uh, another reason for us being against the access uh, children quite regularly play up and down there uh, ranging from one to six uh, of, the, of the local area um, having purchased Kenyon Lane from um, my in-laws, I know that it's not really been used for the last 30 years other than to access um, maintenance uh, and just dropping things off, uh, which obviously isn't a problem. Um, and there also needs to be clear access left for United Utilities, who have a pumping station on our land uh, and obviously need to access that for any, um, any flooding issues in the bottom of the village. Um, and yeah, that's, that's my main uh objection is so um yeah there is some archaic old um 
deeds, which do state something about having to have a maintenance fee um, if there is any regular use. Um, but at, at present, there is no access for, uh, for regular use and no maintenance fee has been agreed either. Um, that's all I have to say, really. OK, thank you. Thank you. Aaron J, you need to press star six. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, um, thanks for the opportunity to speak. So, yeah, I'm, I'm one of the new owners of uh, 209 Blackburn Road. Uh, I'm also a, a shareholder of the recruitment business, which we would like to locate in the former health centre um, if the change of use and extension is granted. Um, we've chosen a heapy due to its location for personal reasons. Uh, it, it's close to one of the other owners' homes, and this is why we're choosing to relocate our business from Blackburn and bring it to the Chorley area. Um, as is, is public knowledge, the the physio, which now solely occupies 207, um, has, has recently downsized, and, um, and we're now the new owners of the empty property, which is 209. Um, the simple extension we, we proposed to the rear of the building uses the same footprint as previously approved um, planning application that the physio submitted. Um, so we're not looking to alter things drastically to the structure or, or the property. Um, the main change in our eyes is, is the um, change of use from commercial medical to um, a use which uh, allows our recruitment business to occupy the building. The residents, obviously, um, gentleman who's just spoke, who I think I've met actually, um, raised concerns about the parking, and we have, um, you know, we've, we tried to address these with a number of solutions. Um, for example, you know, we're willing to park further away and walk to the office. Most of us are used to working in a commercial environment where a walk to your car is considered the norm. None of us have. Um, an issue with this and we're certainly not looking to park outside people's houses or, or you know cause access issues I, I have young children myself which the gentleman's actually met um the owner of the dress is in has stated we can park our vehicles there if required um he, he's uh, kindly done an agreement for us um we, we have proposed the two parking spaces at the rear of the property yes um we also have the option to park all our vehicles and my co-owner's home who has a large driveway uh, and, and it would be a short work um walk to work if necessary um public transport's also an option for our staff as, as they live on transport routes um, plus for the majority of the time our office will not even be fully staffed um, we have a hybrid working model mixing home working with uh, being in the office um, we're a small family business with ties to the local community and we're not looking to cause any issues to the village or, or our prospective neighbors you know eventually we're hoping to be friends and and, and uh, you know get along in the village. Um, we would only be on site from 8 a.m. to 5.30, Monday to Friday as a maximum. So there is no office presence in the evening over a weekend or bank holiday. We do not have many candidates visiting as we do not open, uh, operate a, a, an open door high street um, recruitment agency. Any interviews that need to be carried out are either done by video conference or meeting clients and candidates of venues close to our clients. Uh, we would like to make the building our, our business home for the next 20 years. That is our plan, and we want to become active members of the Heapy community. Um, we Thank believe you. we do not pose a threat Can to the essence. Now, yeah, sure. Uh, and I hope the information I've given reassures um, the gentleman and, and his neighbours. We do not take their concern. We, we do take their concerns seriously, and we're not looking okay. to park um, where it will cause any issues. Thank you. Thank you. Over to you, members. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm happy to support support this in one business to another business. Um, seems very genuine. Uh, I have no no problems with it. So happy to support the recommendation. Uh, thank you, Chair. I'm happy to second. Thank you. I just have a few concerns as the ward councillor. Um, regularly, 
um, the parking issues are brought up on Eastley Road. Um, so it, it's it's all right in application saying that people are willing to travel to work, but will they particularly do it, or are they just going to go to park in the Tom Blackburn Road? Um, admittedly, if this is nine to five, there often isn't a problem uh, in the day, daytime parking in villages. Um, but in an evening, if there's any evening service on this, then definitely there is in that area. And the physiotherapy practice I had on a number of occasions to visit and discuss about patients parking uh, and, and parking in the cross residence drives and uh, blocking one chap across the road who goes out and does vehicle recovery. Um, so I do have concerns about uh, about the parking. So no, I can't. the officer recommendation. All those in favour and the officer recommendation please show. Pass. Those against? Thank you. Pass. Thank you Chair. Uh, committee House decided to grant the Planning Commission subject to conditions for the change of use of the building to offices and the erection of a single storey rear extension um, at Wealdton Healthcare Centre 209 Blackburn Road. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Moving on, item G, Cockle Car and Commercial Repair Centre, pages 139 to 150. Adele's going to present this item as a recommendation that Planning Commission is granted subject to conditions. I have one registered speaker who's been very patient, Stephen Jones, at the objector. Stephen, can you uh, speak and hear everything? Yes, I can. I can hear you. Right, thanks. Adele, can you present the report, please? Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, this application is a Section 73 application that seeks permission to vary two conditions that were attached to a previously granted planning permission that involved the change of use from a workshop and storage building, which was used class D1, to vehicle repairs, which falls within use class D2, with ancillary vehicle sales and MOT testing. Um, the proposal is to add a personnel door and to allow the operation on site to commence at 8 in the morning, Monday to Friday. The site is located within a settlement area as defined by the local plan and acceptability of the use of the site for vehicle repair has been established under the provisions of the approved planning previous application. This proposal therefore seeks simply to establish the acceptability of the additional door on the change of hours of operation. Eight representations have been received, citing a number of grounds of objections that are detailed in your main agenda papers and 16 letters of support have also been received. There's been no formal objections or concerns raised by any of the statutory consultees. A condition of the original planning permission sets out that um, there should be no working on vehicles or car parts outside the buildings and the road shutter doors shall remain closed whilst such work takes place. At the current time, customers are required to access the unit through the front roller shutters and this makes compliance with this condition difficult and has a knock-on impact on the surrounding residential properties in terms of noise. The introduction of the front customer door would enable the roller shutter to remain closed when work is being undertaken. It would therefore represent a net benefit to the surrounding residents. Given the commercial nature of the unit, then it is not considered to represent any detrimental impact to the street seen visually. Um, the proposed change to the operating hours of the unit would allow work to commence at 8 o'clock Monday to Friday rather than 8.30 as existing. No changes would be made on Saturdays, Sundays or bank holidays. The increase in operating hours is considered to be minor and would be set against the noise of rush hour um, traffic during the day. As such, it is not considered that the increase would result in an unacceptable level of noise to neighbouring residents and it is therefore recommended that this application is approved. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you. Okay, Stephen, would you like to speak now? Okay. Thank you, councillors, for your time this evening. In the planning report prepared by Mrs. Hannah Roper, paragraph 16 identifies, and I quote, extended operating hours do have some potential to generate noise that will be audible in the surrounding area. Your planning officer clearly acknowledges that there will be a noticeable noise impact from the proposal. Mrs Roper continues that the said work would be set against the backdrop of people leaving for work and school and the general rush hour. 
Respect of, respectfully, this assessment is incorrect. This is a quiet residential area, not a busy town. Any increase in noise first thing in the morning and in the evening will be highly noticeable, audible, and will dramatically impact the lives of local residents, particularly those who are vulnerable. Given that vulnerable people live adjacent to the site of both Ark and sheltered accommodation and nearby Beaches nursing home, the increase in noise from 8 a.m. will clearly have an unacceptable detrimental impact on their health and well-being. Therefore, the proposal cannot comply with policy BNE1 of the Chorley Local Plan. The site is an old building and not soundproofed against this kind of commercial activity. The noise causes a high level of disturbance. Importantly, the imposed conditions require no monitoring of noise levels or any noise mitigation measures. Dickinson Industrial Estates includes a yard, a yard forecourt area which borders German Lane. Regularly, vehicles attending the site use German Lane as an extension of the said yard, blocking visibility and access along German Lane, which is single track. The rise in customer numbers resulting from earlier opening hours will inevitably lead to an increase in vehicles using this yard and spilling over onto German Lane. The proposed new 8 a.m. start co coincides with the school run, which includes breakfast club, etc. Parents with prams walk the children to primary school along German Lane and are forced to negotiate their way through Dickinson Industrial Estate to get to the school, with a high probability that they may not be seen by vehicles reversing in and out of Unit 5, the, the, the new MOT centre due to restricted visibility caused by the increase in vehicles parked along German Lane. This will inevitably result in an accident at some point. I am sure that members will have seen recent press coverage about the High Court decision in favour of Islington Borough Council, where it was decided that plans for a new Ocado distribution site be overturned due to its proximity to a primary school and risks it posed to the young children. Are the young children of Islington Council more important and deserving of protection than those of Coppel? Thank you for your time this evening. Thank you. Uh, over to you, members. Anybody out there? Councillor Marwood. Start the ball rolling. Um, I've no problem with changing the, uh, the door, uh, but I'm not totally convinced that about the change of time. Um, I'd like to hear others' comments on that. I think that's been sort of slipped in. Uh, can understand the genuine reasons for the, uh, as I say, the change in the, door, the window to the door and so forth. But I mean, I'm, I'm, at the moment, I'm not happy with the, uh, uh, the, the extra, the earlier hours. Uh, I'll come back on that. Thank you. Uh, thank Excellent you, Lord. Um, yeah, I, I think uh, actually the introduction of doors will make a, will be a benefit to the. Um, site if if it does uh, actually help them keep the roller shutter door down and closed um i think um the 8 30 start is a bit of one to be cons to consider a little bit more um <clears throat> i think we do need to be mindful of the fact that the 8 a.m is the standard start date for most businesses uh and 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 i would say most construction companies so when we do put time scales and um, limits on starting time certainly with building sites and construction activity that's normally 8 a.m uh, which can be considerably noisier than um, the mechanics and a uh, garage so I, I think yeah the, the, we have to look at that in its context of the surrounding area but um i wouldn't be too um, too concerned with reducing it to eight o'clock start it is eight o'clock still therefore i'd um, just add that chair i'd support the officer's recommendation Thank you, Chair. Um, this site used to be a builder's yard. It used to open about seven o'clock in the past. There wasn't major problems. There were heavy goods going in and out. Um, can't see any problem with this set recommendation, so I'll move it. Thank you, 
favour of the officer recommendation, please. Show. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, can I just interrupt? Did Sorry. We, we had a proposal. Do we have a seconder? Oh, I've got a proposal. Yeah. Sorry, Councillor Heaton. Thank Sorry. you. Oh, I thought you had. Sorry. I thought Councillor Boardman had. Councillor Thank Sorry. you, Chair. Councillor France. Yeah. It's all right. I think we've sorted it. <laughs> all those in favour of the officer recommendation, please. Any against? Any abstentions? Okay, Tash. Thank you, Chair. That's a unanimous uh, approval in respect of uh, uh, that matter. Okay. Item H has been withdrawn. Item I and J are both. We'll do together. Get the vote separately. Rowcraft Farmhouse owns Walton Lane. Pages 153 to 184. And the other one is 185 to 210. Ian's going to present both items and have no speakers. Ian. Thank you, Chair. Uh, these applications seek planning permission and listed building consent for the uh, redevelopment of the site, including the demolition and conversion of existing buildings to create five residential dwellings. The application site comprises a number of former agricultural buildings within the cursage of Rowcroft Farmhouse which is a Grade 2 listed building and is located in the Greenbelt at Olmswalton. The site has a lawful use for general storage purposes and is therefore previously developed land in line with the definitions set out in the National Planning Policy Framework. The framework and local plan allow for the redevelopment of such sites on the proviso that the development does not have a greater impact on openness than the existing development. Given that the current impact of the existing buildings on the site, um, given the current impact of the existing buildings on the site to be removed, Proposed development would not have a greater impact on openness and is not considered to be inappropriate in the Greenbelt. The impact on the setting of the designated heritage asset at Rowcroft Farmhouse has been assessed by the Council's Heritage Advisor, Grote Lancashire, who considered that whilst there will be some very low level of harm caused by, the, by certain aspects of the proposal, the scheme, when taken as a whole, has the potential to generate wider benefits from the sustained use of the group of traditional buildings which would help to retain the significance of Rowcroft Farmhouse. The public benefits of the scheme are considered to outweigh the identified very low level of harm, and the development is considered acceptable in relation to the impact on a designated heritage asset. There will be no unacceptable impact on amenity as a result of the proposed development, nor, nor in relation to the character of the area. In addition, there will be no unacceptable impacts on highways or uh, ecological impacts subject to conditions. All issues are covered in detail within both committee reports and the proposed developments are considered to be in accordance with the policies of the development plan and it's recommended that planning permission and listed building consent are approved subject to the conditions set out in the addendum. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, thank you. Uh, over to you, members. Councillor Boardman, Councillor Heaton. Glad you're here. I must be small today, Chair. You can't see me. Um, I, I, I like the application, actually. I think um, the, the applicant's done a good job to keep the, um, the, uh, the buildings around the perimeter of a, of a, low, of a uh, single story bungalow style. Um, we see a lot of these coming forward where there's uh, buildings of uh, two story and three story. Uh, the fact that they're all centered around the barn and the traditional barn is being converted, um, I, think, um, I think the application is, uh, on the whole, pretty, pretty good. And uh, I'd like to. Um, Support the officer's recommendation. Pardon? For both, yes. For both, sorry, Chair. <coughs> I support the. Uh, I, su I support the uh, recommendation. I'll second uh, Councillor Boardman's. Uh, For both applications, please show. Anybody against? Any abstentions? Okay. Yes. Thank you, Chair. So members have decided to grant planning permission subject to conditions um, and also grant listed building consent for the redevelopment of the site at Rollcroft Farmhouse on Miss Walton. 
uh, including the demolition and conversion of existing buildings to create five residential dwellings. Thank you, Chair. George uh, King George's field play area, King George is playing fields, please, Badlington, has been withdrawn from the agenda. So item four, the appeals report, pages 211, 212. Adele is going to present this item. Um, one of them, sorry, I, I forgot to press my button. Um, one of them is um, for the safeguarded um, land in Cockle, and the other is um, for um, a domestic property um, where there was a proposal to, to change it for um, occupation for an element of care. Um, we've had a couple of appeal decisions, um, both of which were dismissed. Um, and I think there may be a few more filtering through um, for next time, but nothing was issued as a comment on that. Thank you. Thank you, Marwood. Couldn't let it go by, really. Um, very happy with the Woolbrook on uh, Bluestone Lane. That was um, to go back to the earlier discussions on um, whether we always just follow. The recommendations we don't that's why we have a planning committee uh, and sometimes we go against the recommendation that's not to say that the officers were wrong in this case i know it was a close run thing but you um you have to go by your sometimes your gut instinct or and various other uh things and that's as i say that's why we have a planning committee so um uh, i was one of the instigators of the product of that and um uh, and i I uh, was very pleased to see that it uh, uh, was um, upheld. Uh, as I say, uh, well done, Inspector. Yeah, thank you. Inspector agreed with us. <laughs> thank you. All those happy with to note that report? Okay. Uh, with that, I have no urgent items. So uh, I declare the meeting closed and have a safe journey home.